endometrial carcinoma. Okay. What else? Anybody else? Okay, Polly. What else? This function uterine bleeding. This function uterine bleeding. Nahi, ye nahi hai. Weight 85 pounds. Weight reduction is still no be na. So may is good. Hyperthyroid. Hyperthyroid, good. So what you're trying to say is there is an associated medical condition. Right? One more differential diagnosis I would like you to say. What about CSRA? CSRA is presenting the same thing. What is it? Discharge. Discharge of bleeding and it is found by. Or anemia will be over, weight reduction will be over. So, so your differential diagnosis in this patient is endometrial CA. It is carcinoma of the cervix, fibroid polyp, or a, a bleeding disorder associated with the medical condition. Aap logo ne kuch kehna hai? Hello? Are you guys there? Post party bleeding ho sakti hai, but she is separated from her husband. So that is why there is no post party bleeding. Post party bleeding is a symptom of what? It is a symptom of CA service. CA service knows the post party bleeding to weight loss. Uh, uh, people who are saying palm coin classification, I agree with you, but you need more than palm coin classification in this particular instance. So, you have to say that 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 CA service, CA endometrium, uh, fibroid polyp, or abnormal uterine bleeding because of any reason accompanied with a medical condition like hypothyroidism, which will result in weight loss. Okay, chalo, aage chalte hai. Main thoda sa isme baat batati hu. Patient jo thi, she had a sophageal disorder. She had problem with, she had dysphagia. Jo mene aapko nahi bataya tha pehle. So she had dysphagia, which probably explained her 85 pounds, right? So she had significant points were that she had 17 kilogram weight loss in one year. The patient had difficulty in swallowing for one year. She was very anxious and suffering from an acute psychiatric attack. She was depressed and she was crying. And on ultrasound, she had a submucosal fibroid of 4.7 into 3.2 centimeter, which was displacing the endometria. So by any standard, it was not a, 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 a fibroid was there, but it was not a big fibroid, which we would think would result in this much bleeding, but there was this much bleeding. There was no comment on the endometrial. So I will stop over here and take you back. Yeah. Okay. Now, now the thing is that we did a abdominal hysterectomy for the patient. Should the ovaries have been removed or not? Obviously, we built up a hemoglobin and we did an abdominal hysterectomy. The question that I want to ask you is, what management are you going to do in this patient? She's yeah. already 49 years of age, so, okay. so we can go for this. Everybody can hear it in the hall. Uh, she was uh, 49 years of age. So, so she was 49 years of age. So she, uh, we could go for DSL as well. Yeah. Is, uh, what else would you like to do? Aapne kuch kehna? My original candidate. What would you do? What would be her management? Number one would be to build up her immunity. Number one would be counseling. Hmm. Would you like to counsel the rectal lumbar counseling collection? Yes, yes, I would like to counsel the patient um, in which I should inform the patient about the current condition, uh, inform her about the management um, policies that we can have for her, different managements. What are the different do. management? For example, I'll tell her that first we'll have to build up her hemoglobin for us to proceed for any kind of treatment, whether that's medical or surgical. We can also tell her that we can give her a trial of medical management in case she is very wary of the surgical management as well. That is uh, transdemic acid and the control of bleeding for the family. The family had come from Australia and she was living alone in Pakistan with her three children. Do you, do you still want to do medical management? No, then uh, she has come to you for the first time. Yes. For the first time, she has come to you with a hemoglobin of five. What does it tell you about her? 
that she's having severe um no. she's having what heavy bleeding leading to severe no. anemia no. what does it tell you about the patient nobody is there for taking care of her no mm -hmm. what does it tell you about the patient that she's non compliant हर चीज से कोई लेसन लेते हैं वेन अ पेशेंट ऑफ फाइव हिमोग्लोबिन कम्स टू यू फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड शी हैज बीन ब्लीडिंग थ्रू आउट द ईयर एंड यू वुड इमेजिन द काइंड ऑफ ब्लीडिंग देयर वाज टू ब्रिंग द हिमोग्लोबिन डाउन टू फाइव और फिर भी नहीं आई और एक बंदे को ऑस्ट्रेलिया से आना पड़ा उसको डॉक्टर के पास लाने के लिए व्हाट डज इट टेल यू इट टेल यू दैट शी इज नॉन कंप्लायंट राइट सो इफ शी इज नॉन कंप्लायंट यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेडिकल मैटर एंड पेशेंट्स हु कम टू यू फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम विद अ हिमोग्लोबिन ऑफ फाइव should not be put on medical management because panch hemoglobin se tum unko 10 11 pe laoge pata nahi kitne blood lagaoge phir medical management shuru karoge you can find one of the causes there as well so you can't beat the cause normally i would say a 4.7 cm fibroid rarely get a perfectly correct but in a patient who has got a hemoglobin of 5 and that is the only cause i would do what do you what do you think it should be psychiatric evaluation as well because she thank you my so tricky ke tum logo ne pick nahi kiya okay so there should be psychiatric evaluation as well counseling empathetic anemia correction uterine artery embolism and tdh ba so what are the problems with uterine artery embolism tanzida we should But also um mention uh, because yeah sorry yeah ji batao tanzida uh, yes ma'am uh, ye jo ki inke family complete hai to i thought मतलब इट कुड एम बी एन ऑप्शन आदमी को कहना ही नहीं चाहिए जी चाहे ना चाहे फैमिली कंप्लीट जी 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 मैम आप एज के जी एज यस मैम ठीक है 49 इयर्स ऑफ एज एंड ठीक मैं आपसे ये क्वेश्चन चाह रही हूं आपने मुझे एक मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन दी यूट्राइन आर्टरी एम्बोलाइजेशन और दूसरी आपने मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन दी टीएचबीएसओ सो माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज दैट व्हाई वुड यू डू यूएई एंड प्रेफरेंस टू टीएचबीएसओ and how have you guys ruled out the malignancy uh our pediatric do diagnosis kya thi uh humne c s cervix rakhi thi mujhe ha aur c endometrium c endometrium kaise ab aapne rule out ki jo aapne uterine artery embolization ka dusra question ye hai agar aapne rule out kar bhi di to uterine artery embolization kya benefit dega over th मैम ब्लीडिंग कम हो जाएगी और एच पी बिल्ड करने के लिए मैम दैट चीज नियर टू मी ना बॉस तो मैम दैट्स वाई जो है ना हम उसको ये ऑप्शन मैम दे सकते हैं दैट इट इज लीस्ट इन वेज यू शॉर्ट हॉस्पिटल स्टे तो मैं पता है कि उसमें नाइट्रियमलाइजेशन कितना कॉस्ट करती है उसके साइड इफेक्ट्स क्या हैं मैम एवी मालफॉर्मेशन सो बेसिक बात ये है कि यूट्रेन ऐसी पेशेंट जिसमें साइकैट्रिक इश्यूज चल रहे हैं उसको आप ऐसी ट्रीटमेंट कर रहे हैं जिसके लिए हो सकता है उसे बार-बार आना पड़े सो आई डोंट थिंक यूट्रेन एट्री एम्बुलेंसेशन इन दिस पेशेंट पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट्स इज अ गुड चॉइस चलो अभी लेकिन फिलहाल हम तुम्हारी उसको रख लेते हैं उसमें एंड मैम फिर इस पे दोबारा आएंगे नाउ हाउ हैव यू रूल्ड आउट मेलिग्नेंसी मैम फॉर एंडोमेट्रियल बायोप्सी या ये एंड वी शुड आल्सो कंसीडर द डिफिकल्टी इन सॉल्विंग इट माइट बी बिकॉज़ ऑफ द मेटल मैक्स ऑफ द इट वुड बी मैक्स और टू बी समथिंग एल्स ओके वी विल टेक अ फिजिशियन और अ सर्जन एंड एडवाइस व्हाट एल्स वुड यू डू यू शुड डू अस पैप्स में एज वेल टू वाइटल वैल्यूएशन भी करोगे अल्ट्रासाउंड तो करेंगे तो अल्ट्रासाउंड में लिख के लगाया हुआ इतना बड़ा वी आर गोइंग टू डू सर्वाइकल इवैल्यूएशन एंड एंडोमेट्रियल इवैल्यूएशन ठीक है सो एंडोमेट्रियल सैंपलिंग इसकी होनी चाहिए हिस्टोस्कोपिक करें दूसरी करें फाइव पैप हिस्टोस्कोपी कैसे करें मुश्किल है सो फाइव के ऊपर तो मैं कल मैं पेपर सैंपलिंग कर ले तो ज्यादा बेहतर है बट या इट कैन बी डन इफ यू वांट टू सो यू आर गोइंग टू डू सैंपल आपने सैंपल कर लिया वो भी नहीं आ गया नाउ व्हाट इज द प्लान so we sent the patient to a psychiatrist we got her uh, surgical evaluation that mm -hmm. and on surgical evaluation there was no functional problem with swollen mm -hmm. so no, there was no mass or there was nothing so it was related probably to her psychiatric issue mm -hmm. and the psychiatrist uh, did her evaluation and put her on some treatment and uh, then we had to decide we decided for total abdominal hysterectomy and we counseled for we gave the choice of Uh, ovarian removal versus ovarian conservation and the family decided on ovarian removal 
So we went ahead and we removed the uterus at the O. Do you think we did the right thing? Yeah. Okay. So the patient went back with a hemoglobin of 11 and uh, uh, she came back to us for removal of stitches and she was fine. And three months later, she came back to us crying. What could have happened? Maybe. So her family had gone back and she said that we had removed her ovaries without her consent. Mm -hmm. And she said that she was suffering from acute menopausal symptoms because of removal of the ovaries. And she was very, very upset with us and she scolded us and cried and blah, 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 that you had removed her ovaries. So that is why she was suffering from anxiety and she was suffering from uh, a weakness and she did not feel like eating. And uh, mm -hmm. this was the situation. She was already menopausal. <laughs> so I have two questions for you. Number one, where did we go wrong? Yeah. Number two, was the patient correct? Number three, what should we do? Yes, so, the patient was correct. Because we should have taken informed consent from the patient as well. How do you take informed consent from a patient who is having an acute psychiatric attack? We should consider that his family was very concerned and uh, they decided on your behalf she because says, you were not. She involved. says that I am the patient. Why did my because, family decide? Uh, because she wasn't in uh, a good state of mind. But at she that said time. you should have asked me. Her family was in tight. Her family was in tight. And there's a written consent. Siblings had decided. So I think I will just give you my point of view. When a patient is not able to make a decision on her own, then the two gynecologists should be involved, the family should be involved, and administration should be involved, and the psychiatrist should be involved, and it should be put on paper that she is unable to make a decision on her own. That is why this board has decided that she should get her ovaries removed or the uterus even removed. Mm -hmm. So I think that she was right. We did not follow the proper protocol, though the patient was not in a fit state to make a decision for herself. And we did take her family into confidence. But I think that we should have gone to a more uh, rigorous protocol to make a decision for the patient. And we should have documented that the patient is unable to make a decision on our own. And that is why this board is making a decision on the behalf of the patient. Right? So patient was right. Now, the, now what about the symptoms? You have any problem to do with what about the problem? How are you going to evaluate and how are you going to manage them? The she came, I told you, she came with anxiety, depression, crying, feeling low. And um, uh, she said that she didn't feel like eating. Wasn't she already on medical mitigation? Like Thank you very much. That's a smart question. So the patient had not followed the doctor's advice. She had taken the treatment in the hospital and then left with her. So what should we do? So basically, I think that it is, to me, I, I would not agree with you, Saima, to straight away go on hormone replacement therapy. To me, it is more of, so if I stay, say, okay, we go on hormone replacement therapy, what would be a suitable option for her? SSRI may be a good option for her. But first of all, we have to see whether these are symptoms of depression or does she have any, actually any, she did not complain of any resomotor symptoms. Mm -hmm. She complained of weakness, not wanting to eat, anxiety, and feeling that crying. So all these things were actually really were there when she came to us mm -hmm. in the first place with the acute psychiatric attack. So what we did was that we contacted the same psychiatrist for her and we got her an appointment and we said that first of all we need to go there she will put you on treatment you follow the treatment and then we are going to sit together and see whether you need any other treatment or not so multidisciplinary approach ka also bada acha hai psychiatrist ko involve karna na to aapko psychiatrist ka naam nahi karna so the patient is currently undergoing psychiatric treatment as yet we have not put her on hormone replacement therapy but she can go on hormone replacement therapy so what we did was that we decided that SSRI, Venlafaxin, is a treatment agent which deals with rhythmotor symptoms and it also deals with um, uh, 
it, it also deals with depression. So some form of depression. So we have discussed that with the psychiatrist and the psychiatrist thinks that we should hold it for now. And first of all, we should put the patient on anti-psychiatric drugs, then review after one or two months if, when the acute attack is settled down to see what is the need for how many patients have this. Which should also be taken on board to see whether but now, plan but now they are not even there. They have left. And now another interesting thing, she came to us with one of her daughters who is an O-level student. And while we were counseling last week, her, we realized that the telephone was recording. Her telephone mm -hmm. was doing a recording. And so one of our doctors noticed that and she said that you are recording a conversation. And the girl said that you're not recording your conversation. And so she took the phone and looked at the phone and lo and behold, the patient's family was recording our conversation. So this information I'm telling to you for the reasons that you know, you have all kinds of patients coming to you. So you have to be, when you're doing counseling or when you're talking to the patient, you also have to be alert and aware of the circumstances in which you are working. Any comments? How do you deal with this? Okay, so we deleted the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. She did. Because the girl was an O-level student. So, uh, yeah, so we deleted the conversation and we turned her phone off. We said, we are not going to allow you to sit in the session. So we turned it off. So we turned it off. And then we continued our discussion. We stopped her crying. We gave her some tissues and some empathetic counseling. We told her to go to the psychiatrist and she's under psychiatric treatment currently and we will see how things are. She's eating better and her weight has started to go up. So things are better. So Saval. Now what do you say about this? If you don't have a question, let me ask you a couple of questions. What are your lessons from this particular case? No lessons for anybody? First of all, when we have decided that our consent is informed consent from the patient. So, the first thing is that the most important thing is that the patient was a special patient because of the acute psychiatric condition because of which the patient was presenting <coughs> along with the acute gynecological condition. So, counseling, communication, informed consent, these issues become very important. That is number one. Number two, the it, uh, removal of ovaries is a very personal decision. It's not a case of the ovaries removed, not that they are going to be able to remove ovaries. Okay. Okay. So you had no clear goals in that sense, and you could have been sort of uh, caught unaware both ways. Yeah, but it's not a case of the unit and consent, administration, and board. You can't call it and also the psychiatric treatment. Okay. 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 So, so the important thing was that these were the important things. Routine management to our will be fibroid uterus and anemia ke saath aega. So any part two student will say that we will build up the hemoglobin and we will do a hysterectomy. So there's not much over there. Now coming back to the uterine artery embolization. I think uterine artery embolization needs more counseling and uterine artery embolization has got a failure rate. Uterine artery embolization complication rates are higher, especially at this point in time. Uterine artery embolization is not available in all the hospitals. So uterine artery and uterine artery embolization is generally better for people who want to conserve their family, who are mentally stable, and who can make an informed decision about uterine artery embolization. So I probably would not have chosen uterine artery embolization for this patient. Oh, and yes. And, and the report of this to my I'm so called the doctor. But why can't you go to my Vina in this patient? Because the, because the cavity was distorted. When this, there was displacement of the endometrium in the cavity. Was so the fibroid is bleeding that. She has to if a patient has bled so much, the hemoglobin punch or get conservative management comes to Yapo Road. Now my Vina can look at now you try not to embolization or medical treatment to Savadi. Marina, you can do it as if you have medical oral versus yekarnao, so Marina is a good choice to keep it, but if you have a fibroid now, and you have a compliance for Marina, I would have agreed. Okay. 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 Okay
you can go home and think about them and we will meet again after one week or 10 days or whatever. So that the examiner knows that you understand the importance of a repeat counseling session. Shazad, have you understood? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So, Farhat, Farhat, the question is that this failure could treat the patient to eat or the patient Yes. But the patient has a psychiatric problem. So, the ENT is not going to be able to eat. And the patient is not going to be able to eat. So, the patient is not going to be able to eat. And the patient is not going to be able I would fill out, I would give her Black. either uh, Paxil or mm -hmm. if need be, then I can give her injectable items. But no place for oral iron supplementation till the time the patient has started eating properly. I have injectable. If there is some webs or something, then there is some dysphagia that the patients are having. So that's why they give them the iron supplementation. They put the parenteral. So that they improve. As soon as they improve, the patient's eating will improve. Uh, true, true. I Okay, let's do another <laughs> quick session. Mr. Sahil Vahid, wife of Mr. Vahid, Abdul, resident of Raiwin, is a primary gravita who was married for one year and presented in the OPD with a new date of 17th of December. At the time of admission, which was her first antenatal visit, she was 36 weeks and four weeks present, pregnant. And this is her first antenatal visit. She was admitted to the emergency with complaint of labor pain for five hours. And she's a known case of rheumatic heart disease. So my question is, tum do no job, agle do no ga ga. So my quick question to you is, what are the problems with this patient? So rheumatic heart disease ki uh, repercussions kya hai? If she's a known case of rheumatic heart disease, what are the repercussions of rheumatic heart disease? That is my first question. The second question is how does it matter for this person? Agne do log bhi hai kya hua? Hana kun kafi senior ho gaya, tumhe aage aana chahiye. Haanji. So what, what is the implication of the rheumatic heart disease? The uh, no, fluid management is So fluid, uh, rheumatic heart disease is what? Name tell me, So basically, bachpan mein rheumatic fever hota. Rheumatic fever ki jo repercussion hai, that is rheumatic heart disease. Because rheumatic fever affects the heart. And in the heart, it affects mitral valve. Yeah. the valve, yeah. not necessarily yeah. the mitral valve only, but it, it can affect the valve. So if a patient of rheumatic heart disease presents to you, basically you want to know what is the situation with the valve. Mm -hmm. So what can you do to find out the situation with the valve? Cardiologist. Cardiologist to karega, par aap ek history dekhe, aap examination karenge, cardiologist ko bulaenge, aur echo dekhe. Ye char cheeze hain, अगर आपके पास रिमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज की पेशेंट फर्स्ट टाइम प्रेजेंट कर लेती है 36 प्लस 4 पे तो आपने रिमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज से रिलेटेड ये चार बातें करनी है सो यू गोइंग टू टेक अ डिटेल हिस्ट्री डू अ प्रॉपर एग्जामिनेशन कंसल्ट अ कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट एंड गेट एन एको डन फॉर द पेशेंट नाउ द सेकंड थिंग इज दैट द पेशेंट हैज कम टू यू विद 36 प्लस 4 वीक्स ऑफ जेस्टेशन विद कंप्लेंट ऑफ लेबर पेन सो इसमें क्या करना है and then we will assess the intensity of pain and the condition assess. First, give a global data and then give a global data. Global is that you will try to assess whether the patient is in labor or not. Okay? 
पांच घंटे से हो सकता है इरेगुलर पेन हो रही हो सो लेबर प्रोसेस करने के लिए यू विल टेक अ हिस्ट्री इन व्हिच यू विल आस्क अबाउट द ड्यूरेशन इंटेंसिटी एंड इंटरवल एंड रेगुलरिटी ऑफ कंट्रैक्शन देन यू विल डू एन एग्जामिनेशन एंड यू विल डू अ पेल्विक एग्जामिनेशन टू लुक फॉर वैलिडेशन एंड रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ द सर्विस सो ये दो चीजें जो हमने करनी है इस पे किसी को इतराज कोई इतराज अच्छा मैं चलो एक बात तो मैं कहती हूँ अगर पेशेंट की रोमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज की हिस्ट्री है तो रिगार्डिंग दैट व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू आस्क इन द हिस्ट्री सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट सवाल क्या होगा दो तीन इंपॉर्टेंट सवाल अकॉर्डिंग टू मेडिकेशन अबाउट पेशेंट से पहले What are the symptoms in rheumatic heart disease? Uh, dyspnea. The most important thing is. मैंने dyspnea, breathlessness. पहले क्यों नहीं बोला? सबसे important breathlessness है, which is dyspnea, right? दूसरे मैं भी breathlessness में दोबारा हूँ. दूसरा important सवाल ये है कि last cardiac evaluation कब हुई? और उसपे doctor ने क्या कहा था? उसका report भी दो. समझिए पहला मेडिकेशन तो बहुत बात की बात है पहला सवाल ये है कि पेशेंट को कब से पेशेंट दिखा रही है नहीं दिखा रही क्या हुआ तो यू नीड टू टेक दैट हिस्ट्री ऑफ रोमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट ब्रेथलेसनेस ब्रेथलेसनेस का क्या पता करोगे दैट्स अ गुड पॉइंट के फॉर रेस्ट ऑफ लाइफ एग्जर्शन तो होती है जी आप डिस्प्ले तो देखोगे वेदर इट इज एट रेस्ट और एग्जर्शन सो इफ द डिस्प्ले इज एट रेस्ट इट इज ग्रेट फॉर न्यूयॉर्क हार्ट एसोसिएशन डिजीज अगर माइल्ड एक्सर्शन जो प्रदिष्टि है तो इट इज ग्रेट थ्री अगर मॉडरेट प्रदिष्टि है तो इट इज ग्रेट टू और अगर जो है वो बहुत स्वेयर प्रदिष्टि है तो इट इज ग्रेट वन वो ग्यारहवें फ्लोर पे चढ़ के आई है उसका सांस फूट गया तो फिर ठीक है ठीक है ना मैडम ये भी पूछेंगे कि अगर उसकी प्रीवियस कोई इवैल्यूएशन हुई है गाइनेकोलॉजिस्ट के साथ क्योंकि हमारे पास तो वो तरीके से स्पेस कोड है एग्जैक्टली सो दीस आर द सो बेसिकली 36 प्लस 4 वीक्स पे विद द हिस्ट्री ऑफ रोमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज you want to know everything about rheumatic heart disease and when you ask about the history about dyspnea about going to a doctor then you ask her is she on any medication mm -hmm. and if she is on any medication then you will find out about the type of medication mm -hmm. what is the second thing that you would do history le ab kya karenge investigation examination tum logon ko jo bahut important baat yaad rakhni hai surgery pooch to beshak लेकिन जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट बात याद रखनी है कि व्हेन यू आर डूइंग एन इवैल्यूएशन ऑफ अ पेशेंट इट इज ऑलवेज हिस्ट्री एग्जामिनेशन एंड इन्वेस्टिगेशन इवैल्यूएशन इसके बगैर नहीं हो सकती तो इस पेशेंट का एग्जामिनेशन बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है व्हाट इज द एग्जामिनेशन विद यू देखिए और रोमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज का नेम से क्या ताल्लुक है इट्स अ पल्स रेट कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट तो हमारी पेशेंट ने आगे ओके दिस इज़ द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ आर पेशेंट शी वाज बी पॉजिटिव हर हीमोग्लोबिन वाज 11 ग्राम पर डेसिलीटर वायरल मार्कर्स वर नेगेटिव शी हैड गुड फंक्शन ऑफ द वाल्व्स हर इंजेक्शन वाज 70% एंड शी हैड माइट्रल रिगेजिटेशन व्हिच वाज माइल्ड अब क्या करें The echo was all right, so the patient can undergo a normal labor. That is the first decision. The second decision is that just out of precaution for all cardiac patients, we are going to make sure that you keep the fluid restricted mm -hmm. and keep the fluids to isotonic fluids. Mm -hmm. Right? Next. 
Okay. Now, now you come to the labor component of the patient. Now, tell me. You mean epidural? So the cause it is mild mitral regurgitation. Epidural is not a problem. So the first thing that you will do is is to do an examination to find out whether the patient is in labor or not. Mm -hmm. And because the patient was in labor, we continue to monitor the labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no need basically to augment the labor initially, but later on, concentrated dose of oxytocin was given to augment the labor. And the patient delivered normally. By concentrated, you mean not in uh, So concentrated ka matlab ye hota hai ke aap bajaye 1000 ke, aap 500 ko banaye. Mm -hmm. Or utte hi unit se banaye sure. aur usko low dose de. So concentrated is key because you want to say heartbreak solution because you do not want to overload the system with growth. And the third thing is that in when you are dealing with and you keep the patient propped up, you keep the emergency trolley ready, you make sure that the second stage of labor is shortened. And normally in cardiac patients, it is recommended that active management of labor should not be done. You give up active management of labor, they fast or give up IV data injection. So, venous return income, but that it puts some extra load on the heart. So, you don't want to do that. Or just the man may be thirteen via the it was uh, it was a routine not to give the thirteen to these patients, right? Achan, questions and comments. Now, the echo key cap findings, okay, on the labor of China, the the so, so the thing is that if the patients who have got um, um, uh, no, who have got severe cardiac disease, mm -hmm. in which there is a, a pulmonary hypertension, in those normal deliveries for that, in those patients normal deliveries for yes, erotic heart disease one in the patients. Mem, antibiotic profile axis me be nice. Ah, Mesoprostol to can be given to a cardiac patient after the disease. There's no contraindication. The only problem is that mesoprostol can cause shivering. So sometimes uh, the patient's family can become anxious if you have not counseled them properly. So we are asked to have counseled. Ma'am, uh, yeah. ma during active management of third stage, is my IM Sinto the Engine on delivery? It's my active management in the stage. Okay, okay. It's a passive management only. Okay. Second stage for short current. Second stage for short current, if you have active or passive management, second stage for short current, if you have to be a person. Second stage short current. Third stage, you have to live your presenter, third stage of labor. If the patient is on warfarin, what does it tell you? It tells you that there is a valve replacement. So, Peri Bhatia, ke hamari ye jo particular patient, hai, she has, does not have a valve replacement. But if you are asking a hypothetical question, that at 36 weeks, the patient should be shifted from warfarin and converted to injectable heparin or plexin. So, ask for plexin use. <coughs> plexin can be stopped when the patient goes into it. Or if you are planning an induction, to you can stop it. Six to twelve hours before. G. Six to twelve hours before. G. Unfractionated effort or plexin. Any other comments? I think that you don't know anything. You are very hard. How do you do the counseling? How do you do the counseling? How do you do the counseling? I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. There is no problem in the counseling. It's my counseling is a word that I was going to tell you about the counseling that the penny about to get you that the patient was not aware that having a cardiac condition, she should be consulting a gynecologist early in pregnancy. So the first thing we told her was that considering that she's a cardiac patient, she should be in regular contact with a doctor, a physician, a cardiologist. And the second thing is that she should, when she becomes pregnant, she should immediately contact the doctor. The second thing we told her was that she was a young lady, so we told her that she should have contraception for at least three years, and progesterone contraception as well as property are not contraindicated for the patient, so she could use that. The third thing we discussed with her was for her need to go back to a physician after six weeks after delivery, so that they can review her condition and see whether she needs 
anything or not, which she did not, but she did tell her that she should be in regular contact with the physician. So counseling in this thing was in this patient was very important, not only of the patient, but also of the family. And of the family, because if the patient is not compliant, at least the family needs to realize that cardiac disease with pregnancy is associated with significant morbidity. So the patient needs to come in for antenatal care early in pregnancy. Fortunately, her hemoglobin was normal. If she had anemia, which 55 to 60% of Pakistani pregnant women have, then we would have had anemia and a cardiac patient and a pregnant patient. So that would have added to her complication. So I think that is why it was important to... So she delivered normally? She and delivered normally. And then you did place a PPICD as well? We did. <laughs> <laughs> we did put a PPIUCD because we, we counseled them yeah. and we discussed with them the need for a PPIUD and we put in a PPIUD. How many of you actually do PPIUD? Are you girls aware of what PPIUD is? Presental. Post placental IUCD placement. Would it get me devable? Yes, yes. So, how many percentage yes. of your patients actually uh, end up by uh, using PPIUD? After C section, after C section, yes. Yeah. 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 Very few. But you need to do it because you can counsel your patients for birth spaces. This is a very good opportunity. You can put it after vaginal delivery very easily. It's a very good tool. You must think about it. Unless you think about contraception, you're not going to talk about contraception to the patient. You must think about it. You must take away their worries. You must counsel them about the, uh, about the positive effects and benefits of contraception, not only to the baby, but also to the mother. Is he counseling antenatally twice so he can hear? 28 weeks, uh, 34, uh, I talk to my patients at 28 weeks, and then we talk at 34 and 36 weeks. So though the fact is pregnancy may, you must make a serious attempt to talk contraception with your patient and her husband. And many times you will find when the patient is not agreeing, the husband does. So how many of concept that contraception you have argument that they did not do actually. Any other questions? Uh, I have a Sir, you have a question? Sir, your patient is a very good patient. His LMP was 10 March 2020. And the expected date was released on 17 December 2022. His LMP was 9 months pregnant. Sir, I have a note. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Very good. Mashallah, mashallah. So, thank you for being there and uh, listening with so much uh, interest. I have a note here. Many, many notes here, actually. Because half our team was covered by the chat group. So, I'm just going to say that. No, it's not a note. आप रोमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज पे कंसंट्रेट कर रहे थे इस डेटा पे नहीं कर रहे लेकिन मैम इसमें डेट ऑफ एडमिशन कुछ और थी तो मैंने ये सोचा था शायद इसलिए कि 36 तक लिखी है इसमें ये लिखा है कि हमीद अति हॉस्पिटल में इस डेट को एडमिट हुई नवंबर में इसीलिए मैं मैंने कुछ भी नहीं कहा था in a patient, she had uh, she had very well controlled heart disease and PPIUD and copper T is not contraindicated in a patient of rheumatic heart disease. We don't have to make things that we can do. That is why contraception is not successful because often gynecologists themselves are scared of putting in IUD. So there is no contraindication. Yes, sir, over to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. You.